do you feel like you're paying too much in taxes every year or have a relationship with your current CPA where you only meet them once or just before tax time? Look, I want you to know that there is another solution to paying less in taxes and keeping more of your money. Valard Advisors is a leading fractional CFO and CPA firm that specializes in advanced tax strategies for founders, athletes, and entrepreneurs. Valard Advisors can help you navigate the complexity of business taxes and ensure that you're paying the least amount in tax possible. But this is far more than tax preparation. This is strategy. This is really getting into to the data-driven decisions that your business needs to make in order to develop a long-term strategy that aligns for your business and personal goals. Whether you're looking to minimize tax liability, maximize your deductions, or plan for your financial future, Valard Advisors has the expertise and experience to help you get there. Do not wait until tax season. Work with professionals today. Contact Valard Advisors to schedule a consultation. If someone would have told me when I was 19 years old, the things that I would be doing, I wouldn't even have been able to wrap my brain around what was possible. What you can create, you can't even grasp right now. So rather than thinking about, oh gosh, what if I fail at this next thing? What if you succeed? And what if it works out even better than you can imagine? Welcome to Generation Wealth. I'm Candy Valentino, and I've been building businesses and generating wealth before I could legally order a drink. For more than two decades, I've built, scaled, acquired, and exited businesses, all while investing in real estate and building financial freedom. Now I want to help you expand your wealth and give you the proven roadmap to implement today. It doesn't matter if you're a part of Generation X, Generation Y, or Gen Z. It is time to join Generation Wealth. Now let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. And we are going to break down today a little bit about the research that I did on the Forbes 400 richest people and how you can use a lot of these things in your life in order to establish multiple streams of income so that you can stop trading time for money. So many times people say you've got to build multiple streams of income in order to build wealth, but they don't really specifically tell you what that means or what you can do now in order to start to develop that. So I want to break into that today. First thing, it's really important to remember everything that we have been taught or learned or picked up in our lifetime about money. It's actually incorrect. Everything we're taught in school is to earn money, retire when we're 65, get a good job, go to college. And a lot of those things, we have the data to support that they aren't the smartest ways or the fastest ways to build wealth. The ways that we know how to build wealth is by minimizing taxes, establishing multiple streams of income, taking your earned money and turning it into investments so that your money can make more money without you trading time for it. And so I want to break down exactly how to do that in this episode. As I've shared numerous times, and it's in depth in the book, making sure that you understand the difference between earned income, passive income, and portfolio income, and really flipping this script on its head completely, instead of earning money to spend money, we need to be earning money to save money, saving money only to invest it. And then those investments that pay dividends, that is what you spend. This is the complete opposite of what we're taught in society. But doing this one thing will set you up to create wealth, not just now, but for generations to come. Because here's the thing, earned income, this is any money that you make from your career, your job, or even your business is taxed at the highest rate possible. And taxes will be the greatest destroyer of your wealth. There's two kryptonites when it comes to building wealth, and that's taxes and in debt. And of course, I mean bad debt, credit cards, auto loans, things like that, bad debt on depreciating assets. The faster you can take that earned income and turn it into investments, the more you will start to get out of the rat race and really build true wealth. So how do we do that? When you take that earned income, what you should be only saving for is a fallback fund, having some liquid available so that if you have a loss of income, an illness, or some unplanned expense, making sure that you have that three to maybe nine months of expenses in place before you start investing. Everyone thinks that nothing bad's going to happen to them, but obviously from me being through, my dad had a lot of illness and a lot of accidents that we weren't aware of. 
I've had fires. I've had so much loss having three to nine months of expenses in place. And especially if you have a business, you know, you want to make sure that the people that you're providing jobs for that you have this fallback fund, should there ever be something that shifts in your market or your industry. So you're earning money. And the only thing that you're saving in maybe a high yield savings account or a super liquid, maybe money market, or even a flex CD is that fallback fund. So God forbid something happens, you have some cash on hand. But other than that, the only thing you're taking your earned income for is to invest it, to build, taking it out of active income and building passive or portfolio income. And what is the difference? Passive income is money that's earned from sources other than employment. And it's something that you do once. The IRS describes it as something that you do once, receive money for with little to no effort, which typically is what real estate falls into. Portfolio income, on the other hand, is generated from assets that pay you dividends or interest. And it's also something that you do once, receive money for with little or no effort. This is mainly, this could be mutual funds, this could be the stock market, these could be bonds or treasuries, securities that you're investing in and pay you dividends, interest, and other income that you're not trading time for. But here's the thing when we talk about investments, there's typically a high barrier of entry, not always, right? You can sometimes get a low barrier of entry to buy a little bit of stocks, but in order for that to pay over time, whether it's a mutual fund or bonds, it has a longer timeline in order for you to get a really substantial return on your money. When we look at real estate, typically, if you're doing a very traditional deal and you're not doing a sub two or seller financing or anything that's available possibly right now, you're doing a traditional deal where you're putting 25 or 30% down on an investment property. Of course, that's a higher barrier of entry. You need some cash to be able to save up in order to get that. And the timeline on your return varies. It depends if you're doing a commercial property, a multifamily, if you're doing a flip, which of course is not passive income, that's active income. The timeline varies on real estate, but there's one thing, there's one investment, there's one asset class that has a very short timeline that has little to no overhead on the front end and can almost generate income immediately and typically has a pretty low barrier to entry. And that's owning a business, building a business that's an asset. And when we researched the Forbes 400 wealthiest people, we found one common denominator. 75% of them either owned a business or they had money from their family starting a business prior to. So 75%. And when we really looked at everybody, we did the largest study ever done of people with a net worth of $2 million or more. So not just the, the millionaire that gets it from 65 years old because they started investing when they're 20. That is typically the person that's going to have a million dollars when they retire. But in order to double that, in order to have 100% more and to do 2 million, it's actually a smaller subset of people that do that because you have to do a few more things in order to do that as opposed to just play the long game in a mutual fund or other types of investments. And what we found was that those people have four streams of income. Now you'll hear the stat perpetuated online and in social media that says that there are seven streams of income, but really there are four. And that's because most people are, are classifying streams of income incorrectly. But of the Forbes 400, the wealthiest people, over three fourths of them all had money wealth built from a business. And that's because a business can be a true wealth builder. If you build it right, it has cash flow, it gets tax reductions, it has asset creation. And depending on what you're trying to start or build, you can do it with virtually no overhead. You get unlimited cash flow with business if you manage your money right. And the more cash flow you have, the more investment opportunities you have. That's why it's so important to know numbers and data inside of the business. You'll hear me talk a lot about creating systems and processes to understand cash flow, holding a state of the union meeting, working with a fractional CFO, a tax strategist. These are all things that will have a massive ROI on the investment because you'll start to keep more money that you make. You also get the tax reduction, right? When you own a business, you earn money, you spend that money, and then you pay tax. When you work for a business, you earn money, pay tax, and then spend the difference. Businesses can take advantage of so many tax deductions and reduce the taxable income that most people can't when they're working inside of a business. And then third, it creates an asset 
if you're building it right. An asset is anything that has current or future value. These could be things that are owned by the company, assets with inside the business, and then the equity in the business is all of the assets less the liabilities. And that equity will translate and increase your personal net worth because a business can be an asset that holds value and something that you can sell at the end to generate even more income. And I know a large portion of my audience are entrepreneurs and founders, but if for any reason you're, you're not one, or you're thinking about maybe doing something else or creating another business or another line of revenue, so often people think I'm not going to do that because what if I fail? And they're so afraid of failure, but what if you succeed? What if it works out even better than you thought. Because here's the thing, if someone would have told me when I was 19 years old, the things that I would be doing, the assets that I would have created, the life that I would have, I wouldn't even have been able to wrap my brain around what was possible. Because everything that you think right now, everything that you want, everything that you believe, everything that you think you can have is based off of your past, your past background, your past behaviors, your past experiences, your past failures, your past mistakes. What you can create, you can't even grasp right now. So rather than thinking about, oh gosh, what if I fail at this next thing? What if you succeed? And what if it works out even better than you can imagine? Building wealth, building a business that you can exit, building a life that you love that's beyond your wildest dreams is not complicated. It's actually quite simple, but that doesn't make it easy. If it were easy, everyone would do it. But there's never been an easier time, a better time to build wealth and to create the financial future and freedom that you and your family deserve. And if you want to start a business and you want to build it right from the beginning, you can go to my website, candyvalentino.com, click on resources, and I have a free 25-step founder's guide in order to do a few things in the beginning to set you up to succeed in business. And it doesn't matter if you already have a business. I have worked with entrepreneurs doing millions of dollars in revenue and have still uncovered a few of these steps that they haven't done in the beginning. So again, candyvalentino.com, click on resources and get the founder checklist. Okay, guys, that's all for today's episode. We will see you next time. And don't forget that if you didn't buy a copy yet of Wealth Habits, it is now available on Audible. And thank you so much for all of your support because we are number one bestseller new release in multiple categories. And of course, if you already have a copy of the book and downloaded it and listened to the book, please consider leaving a five-star review over on Amazon. It would mean the world to me as well as many other readers that need this information. Okay, guys, that's it for today. We'll see you next time on Generation Wealth. Generation Wealth.